Hey, hello, how are you? And welcome to Road Odyssey. Hey, hello, how are y'all? Hope you're doing great. I am Burke, you are you, and thank you for being you, and thank you all of y'all who have subscribed. Welcome to Road Odyssey. Please subscribe down below. Thank you very much. And of course, this is about the C8 Corvette again. So this may be one of my last C8 Corvette videos as far as, you know, observations or, you know, things that I'm learning. So who knows? But this is number four. So with this one, uh, my wife and I, we went from Texas up into Arkansas, did a lot of driving around, and being on those hills, I learned a few more things about the car, how it performs, and maybe some tidbits that uh, could be important for you. Uh, anybody who lives out in mountain areas with really steep driveways and uh, hills to climb might already know all this stuff, but... You know, what the heck, I'm going to share it with you in case you don't know or in case you're waiting to get your C8 Corvette, this might be good information for you to be thinking about uh, while you wait. So anyway, we are going to talk about the front, the transmission, and the active fuel management system a little bit. So those are at least three things on my mind as I begin getting into this video. So here we go. Just thought I'd share this meme with y'all real quick. Sort of is true for me and my wife. And what did we do? We went to Eureka Springs. Took the C8 out on a nice long drive. Probably nearly a thousand miles. All through the mountains. Really enjoyed it. And doing such, I had some observations that I wanted to share with y'all. So here we go. Let's begin by looking at the frunk. So getting up here, you can push the button under the driver's side headlight. And when you do push that little button, at least on my car, it's not it set in there very well. It kind of rattles a little bit. Just wondering if y'all have noticed that with your car. Here's a repeat of that therapy meme. And uh, you know what? Yeah, we really got great gas mileage, not like the old cars. So we were getting at least 28 miles to the gallon. So going up to Eureka Springs in tour mode. And then this was in tour and sport mode. Very nice gas mileage. And then just in sport mode on the drive back home, still did very well on the gas mileage. Looking down on my car, I can see just how big it really is. It's got a really big footprint. So, but you can tell from this picture on this hill that this is a very significant little hill going down this thing. Now, when I went down this, I did it a couple of times, and I could hear the car kind of hit a little bit. Uh, it sounded like the transmission hitting. So I've learned that the best thing to do is probably pull back on both of those paddles so that you go into neutral and just kind of coast down or maybe reverse back down into your parking spots or whatever in this case. And I'm just curious if any of you out there have other suggestions or thoughts about this. A quote that I found off of one of the Corvette forums was this quote right here. And it said, another really bad thing to do is to ride the brake downhill at a slow speed. The DCT will buck and go back and forth between gears, which is, I think, what happened to me. Uh, and then it continued, I have a long, steep driveway, and I pull both paddles to coast down it every time. I just really like these pictures of the engine bay at night with the lights on. Pretty cool. This next topic is basically about the active fuel management system, 
where there is cylinder deactivation, meaning that you go from a V8 down to a V4. Here I'm showing you under the letter P on your display what it looks like when you switch from tour mode to sport mode and then to track mode. This is a nice picture of what your screens will look like in the three different modes. While in tour mode, primarily in sixth gear, I would hear a loud knock when the cylinders were deactivated and I went down into that V4 mode. I only saw one post in Facebook and it said quote unquote, anyone noticing a whoosh sound just before the motor goes from V8 to V4 mode each time, louder when the engine is cold. It has been explained, even from Taj, that manual mode stays in V8, no AFM. Also, track mode stays in the V8, no AFM. And this is because the PTM, or the Performance Track Management, will not utilize the active fuel management system. Now, you can also set up your Z button for the Z mode, and you have to put it into the track mode in order to uh, divert the AFM from being used. If you use track mode to avoid AFM, then you will be running at a higher RPM. You will probably be staying in sixth gear if you're out on the highway trying to run, you know, 65, 70 or more. So, that may not be a very good option if you're just out driving the highways. Now here I'm getting on the highway. I'm just slowly speeding up to about 70 miles per hour. You'll notice I go from fifth gear to sixth gear and it will remain in sixth gear while I am in track mode as far as going up to as much as 74 and 75 miles per hour. You'll see the RPMs will stay just below 2500 and in my mind, that's kind of a high RPM for just cruising the highway. And eventually here, I slow down to 63 to 65, and I remain in that. Again, though, it will remain in sixth gear at about 21, 2200 RPM. For me, in my mind, I don't know that I would want to stay in sixth gear for a very long duration out on a cruise. That means to me, in track mode, this is not a cruising alternative to defeat the AFM. Here I'm just showing you how I go into manual mode in order to defeat the AFM. Now, I'm just cruising at around 70 or so and I'll just let you watch this so that you can see while I kind of keep the speed steady-ish that the uh, car does not change from 8-cylinder to 4-cylinder. In my opinion, using manual mode to your advantage and getting used to it might be the number one way of avoiding the AFM while you're out on simple cruises. I'm not talking about spirited drives, sport, highly track-related drives, just good, simple cruises. So manual mode, I think, is the best fit for uh, getting around the AFM. You can also use Z mode. So this is that button on the steering wheel and it is configurable through your settings. You can have your clutch settings on track mode and then reconfigure your exhaust and other things. But this is still again when you're out on long cruises and you're needing your seventh and eighth gear, I don't really know that this is really all that great of an option. My last little piece of research was I looked for AFM disablers 
And what I saw on Corvette Forum and a couple of other sites was that these things are not appropriate for the C8 Corvette at this time. You might either put the car in limp mode or it just may not even run that well, if at all. So AFM defeaters or disablers, uh, just not an option at this time from what I can see. And furthermore, if you think that you can remove the fuse for the AFM or anything like that, uh, here again, you're probably not going to be able to drive your car. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe down below. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And hope this video helped you all think a little bit more about your C8 Corvette. Or if you're waiting on a C8 Corvette, maybe these are some of the reasons why you want to wait. You want some of these bugs worked out. So anyway, hope it was informative enough for you and enjoyable. So with that, relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.